Hey, Don Copeland here with the Compress IUV 600S. And we're going to talk to you today a little bit about something, uh, kind of a novelty type of item or maybe even a specialty type of item that you print for your business. And we figure, what the heck, it's summertime, right? And for a lot of people, when you think about summertime, you think about golf. Now, we're in Florida. In summertime, we think about golf in Florida because there aren't a bunch of tourists down here and the courses are actually open. During the winter, we golf also here. During the winter, there are tourists all over the place. But what we're going to do is just kind of a simulation of uh, like a tournament or something like that where you want to give away golf balls for the teams. And so what we've done, we've actually set up a piece of artwork that has a custom logo on it. We're going to use a Cold Essie logo, of course, because we're Cold Essie. And then it actually has the name of the person and the team they're on that is going to be on each one of these golf balls. I've set this up. The jig that we've got in the machine right now is uh, set up to do 108 golf balls. That's nine dozen golf balls. You have nine rows here of golf balls. And we're going to print these out. Each row is a dozen golf balls. It's going to represent a different player that would be in the tournament. Great opportunity to make a lot of money. 108 golf balls. You know, you can figure you can charge anywhere from 25 to 50 cents a piece to embellish them. And you add that up, you start to do that. If you get 50 cents a piece, that's still like $54 per tray for embellishment just to decorate the golf balls. Great way to make money with the machine and it's easy. You'd want to build a second jig, have another jig made up so you could be loading it up. As we learned as we were preparing for this, that's where the biggest time comes because you have to orient the balls in a certain way so that you're getting your logo printed in the right space. But it allows you to take nice off-the-shelf golf balls, embellish them specifically for a company for giveaways, for tournaments and things like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and load this up and we're going to go over the software show you what we've done to set this up because it's pretty cool. We're actually using variable data and we actually have a curved uh, name in this. So you actually are getting to see that variable data just follows the pattern of the actual data that we set up with the, the circular motion. So we're going to go ahead and load this up and then we're going to show you how we did this on the software. Okay, so what we have here is we've created a design. We'll call this just a, a template type of design. This is a cold SE logo. And then I have two pieces of replaceable data. This one section down here and this section up here. These are actually text strings. And it's kind of cool. I've arced these to fit around the logo on the ball. And what you're going to see is when we go and start to fill this out, it's actually going to drop the names in and they're going to follow the same arc, which is, uh, so it's kind of an added bonus there. We're getting to see some replaceable data, but we're also getting to see how it also fits into, if I could have made it into a flag shape or whatever, it's going to follow that same type of uh, changes to the text. So I grab all three of these pieces. Again, there's three pieces, the logo and then two text strings. I, I went up here under our badges command, which is actually allows you to use variable data, serialization and all in here. We're going to do nine of these because there are nine dozen golf balls on our trays you saw. This is the data that I'm going to replace. If there are other strings in there, I could just choose to replace, if I like, for instance, if everybody was in accounting, I could just choose the Mark Stevenson to replace the data, all right? But here I'm showing, I'm gonna replace both those strings of data. I have a data file here, which is a simple text file that is actually a, uh, I think this was a tab delimited, yeah, it's a tab delimited uh, database file that we dropped straight out of Excel. If you, uh, if you aren't real familiar with database files, you basically can, as long as you can get it into Excel, Excel will allow you to export it out in tab delimited, common delimited, several different formats like you see right here. This one we use is the tab, which is the most common I've used for data. And they're gonna to be a total of nine pages. I'm actually treating each of these as a separate page. I'm going to just tell it okay. And it's gonna come up here and show me the string. The, the Mark Stevenson string will be replaced with these names. And then accounting will be replaced with these names uh, th to fit it on the bottom of the ball. Now, if these would have been mistaken, I can actually choose one and then move it to the right or move it to the left. So we didn't need to. And if I had serialized, say, numbers on these, I could actually choose a string and serialize it one, two, three, four, whatever, one, five, 11, whatever, however you wanted to stage it. All right. So I'm going to say OK. And now you'll notice across the bottom here, it shows me nine pages. Page one is Linda, two is Scott, three, Jay. All the way across, I have nine pages. When I go to print these now, I'm going to send to the compress rip. I'm going to tell it which directory I'm sending it to. which is the single layer. I'm going to send these designs all over to the single layer for my 600S. And what it's going to do is it's actually going to send all nine of these pages that if, unless I tell it specifically, current page. Let's say that I had to do a reprint on page two and page seven. 
I could put two comma seven, I could put one through three, whatever, all right? So I'm gonna tell, go ahead and print all of the pages. It's gonna send those over to the RIP. That's what it's doing right now. Here you see on the bottom of the page. And when I pop over here, it's gonna start stacking these up because it's importing nine separate jobs. You'll notice that the screen is flashing. You know, tell me how to do it. I'm gonna tell it, okay, express on the first one. All right, express on the second, express on the third, fourth, fifth, six, seven, eight, and nine. And as you'll see here on the screen, we now have all nine of these. They're all nine different, all right? They're all oriented the same way. As we zoom in, you can actually see. They're all oriented, centered up on the spot on the balls, which is the center of the slots on our golf ball jig. Now I gotta do is take, select all of these, and rip them. This is cool, you're, you're gonna be amazed when you see how much it costs to print these golf balls. About halfway through. And what it's actually doing is it's actually ripping each file one time and then it replicates it across. So it's actually ripping nine files. It's not ripping 108 files. So that's why it goes a lot quicker. Now, if these would have been all separate individual ones, it would have taken a lot longer. So job cost, you ready for this? 0.4 cents. That would be for each file, all right? But it's 0.4 cents for each file, which comes down to roughly 4 cents for the whole page of, of files. So we're printing 108 golf balls for under 4 cents. Uh, roughly speaking, that means that you can print 5,000 trays of these golf balls with a liter of ink. All right. So we're going to go ahead, we're just going to send this job over to the printer, I'm going to click the print, and we're ready to go. All right, we got the printer started, I just started my clock. I want to make sure that we have a good idea of how long it takes to print these golf balls to give you an idea of how profitable it can be. All right, so this would be like a, a giveaway golf ball. So. We didn't print at our highest quality, highest range, but we went with what I would consider a, a quality setting uh, on the machine that's allowed us some good speed. We're printing a 720 DPI, unidirectional. All right, so it's 720 by 720, unidirectional with a fairly small droplet size. So we could get a little bit better quality on the balls if we wanted to, but frankly, we don't really need to because if you saw the way these hacks play, none of these balls are coming home after the tournament anyway, right? But this is a moderate quality ball here. I'll pull one up and we'll show you right here. Moderate quality print for a lot of applications, that's going to be completely sufficient. And I think when you see the print time, you're going to be ecstatic when you figure that you can make 40 cents or so of all, 40 to 50 cents per ball for printing them like this. I think one of the really cool things about this is the fact that we're using variable data and it's not just straight line text, it's arced text that's going all the way around the ball, and we're variably dropping that data in, and it's following the same pattern. So all these, these things, you see a name, and you see a, a department right here on the bottom. How cool is that that you're able to do that and, and get all these balls to look pretty much the same, and they've got different people's names on them. It's pretty neat. And, and to give you an idea, it's kind of hard to tell where we're at. It looks like we're on dozen either... Uh, six or seven right now, and it actually, no, actually I think we're on dozen number eight right now, and we're not even at three, three and a half minutes of print time. Yep, running over the last set of balls right now are just starting to print. This is crazy. In case you think this stuff is canned, no, we were anticipating kind of a little gentleman's bet on the side of how many times we're going to be able to turn the bet around on this print. Wow. How much time do you think it was, Marky Mark? Uh, four and a half minutes. Nope. Three minutes and 58 seconds. All right. So... Here you go. Here's the quality we got. Remember we were talking about I wanted to replace Mark Stevenson? Here's your time. Three minutes and 50-something seconds. What is that? 3.58.
being, I'm feeling a little generous today. We're going to call it four minutes, all right? And I'm going to be real about it too. We're not going to, that doesn't mean, as many of my competitors would have you believe, that you can do 15 of these trays in an hour because that would assume zero reaction time, zero reload time. But I think comfortably, if you're doing this whole tray in four minutes, right, and getting the quality that you need, let's say that we add on even two minutes for each tray. So let's say we just do 10 of these trays an hour. There are 108 golf balls on a tray. Again, very conservative, 40 cents per golf ball profit for being able to print them. So that would be somewhere in the area of $43 a tray profit times 10 trays. That is $430 an hour profit doing 10 trays of these golf balls an hour. Now, great work if you can get it. They're probably not going to be able to keep your business going doing that 40 hours a week. If you were, I would not be doing these videos, right? But think about the downtime you have with your printer. If you're able to pick up jobs like this doing these tournaments, you can make good side money. I mean, literally, if you could run this machine doing this two hours a month, it's going to make your lease payments on the machine just by doing these golf balls. So it's just another great add-on you can do. You're going to invest some money and have some jigs made. Right? And outside of that, it's just setting up the templates in your software and letting it rip. You probably have to order a, a liter of ink every two years to do all this printing because as we, we seriously were saying, each one of these rows was four tenths of a penny. There are nine rows. That comes to three and a half cents, four cents worth of ink on, on all of these golf balls. So if I did 10 in an hour, I'm only doing 40 cents worth of an ink an hour. That would be $3.20 I mean, $3 worth of ink in an eight-hour day. So great opportunity, great way to make some money. It's also a great way that you can get your, your face out there. If you're doing stuff for, for uh, charity tournaments and stuff like that, you could actually print, pre-print your company logo on one side, your, your information on it, and maybe you offer to do the golf balls for a dime a piece or something like that. You're still covering your, yourself, paying your labor and whatnot. Everybody's happy. So another really cool way that we can make money with the Compress IUV Compact UV printer that gives us the ability to do things simple, using some powerful software that allows you to bring in. And if you, you realize it, in this case, you're also waiving yourself with some liability. Your client provides you with the name spelled properly, the positions right, the room numbers right, whatever all that data is, and then you're just feeding it to the beast and the software and allowing it to grind through. It's a great way to do it. So, customized golf balls here with the Compress IUV 600S. You could do it on the 1200, but I don't think you could lift the jig if you filled it up for the 1200. Thanks for watching us.